Hey, how are you all? My name is Kevin Davani, the host of the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. I have the pleasure to announce my next special episode with Alessandro Cesare, also known as El Sultan Bitcoin, and Nico, the CEO of Bitvolt Mining. And we're going to talk about banks, uh, central bank digital currencies, censorship resistance, Bitcoin and freedom and, you know, a range of other overdue questions. So without further ado, here's my talk with Alessandro Cesare and Nico. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to my podcast platforms. Thanks so much for your support and enjoy. All right. Welcome to the show, to my Total Bitcoin podcast show. Uh, we got the total Venezuelan connection today. <laughs> with Alessandro Cesare, also known as El Sultan Bitcoin. And we got Nico, the CEO of BitVault uh, uh, Mining, which um, hopefully you're gonna you know, um, tell, tell us a little bit about it and introduce yourself. Alessandro Cesare needs no introduction. He's been on my show a couple of times, but uh, uh, why don't we start off with you? Nico, um, really interesting stuff you do in the background. So yeah, why don't you tell me about yourself a little bit? Yeah, awesome. So basically I, I started mining in 2016. Uh, I actually wrote my origin story on Citadel 21, but basically I was a very, I was at a very low point in my life. Um, I was actually living uh, on a friend's couch and things weren't going very well for me. Um, and then my cousin came from, from Venezuela, right? And uh, we, we were, I, I will never forget, we were sitting on my friend's balcony and essentially he started telling me that he's like, look, I'm like, what are you doing? You're like, what are you up to? Because I was so desperate. I, w I wanted to find something. And he's like, well, I have these machines and uh, basically they print magic internet money. And right then and there I was sold. <laughs> I was like, what do I need to do? So, um, so fast story short, I borrowed money from my mom. I borrowed money from my ex-girlfriend, which I never paid back. <laughs> I borrowed money from like literally maxed out my credit cards. I took every single dime that I can get, right? And uh, I hopped on a plane and I went to Venezuela. Uh, when I got there, my uncle already had an established mining operation. This was like in 2016. This was before the bull run. And um, I told him, I was like, listen, can I work for you? And he's like, yes, but. I'm not going to pay you a dime, right? So from there, I kind of just learned basically everything there is to know about mining. Um, I, I was on uh, Bitcoin Kindergarten the other day, and I made a presentation about mining and, and, and all these things. And everyone kept commenting, like, look, what, what are the actual technicalities? And I don't know the technicalities, but if you want to talk to me about in, uh, installation of hardware, if you want to talk to me about electricity, if you want to talk to me about um, hot air extraction, I'm an expert in all those things because I'm self-taught. So basically, I learned everything there needs to know, everything there, there, there I needed to know um, in Venezuela, and I started... I basically put half the money um, I saved up, which wasn't a lot, into Bitcoin, but it was the beginning of 2016, right? So it was, it was no, sorry, it was like about to be 2017. And I put every single dime I had half into Bitcoin, half into, um, uh, we were buying uh, ASICs, uh, S9s at the time mm. from directly from China. My, my uncle had a connection. And man, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Uh, I got orange pilled. I started, I got into it because of the money. And then eventually I, 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 I fell in love with the ideology of it. So things went very well. Obviously, 2017 was a very strong year, but things started to happen in Venezuela. And I'm sure Alessandro could mm -hmm. testify to this. Mm -hmm. The government started wising up. And at customs, when we mm -hmm. were importing S9s, all of a sudden they started disappearing, right? And you know what mm -hmm. that means. They were taking these machines mm -hmm. themselves and they would mine, they would be mining these things at home. So things started to get sketchy. The government started to put more pressure. So at that point, I made the I, I had enough experience, I had enough capital because Bitcoin raised so much so quickly, right? That um that I decided to pack up and move to South Carolina. I got very lucky because I was in commercial real estate before um, before I got into before I got into Bitcoin full time, 
And one of my clients in commercial real estate, what happens is that your clients send you their properties, right? To see, you know, if you could find a, a, a renter to see if you could right. sell that property. And I saw the, the, basically the details of this property and it had 15 megawatts and it was a factory. It was a pantyhose factory and it had all the necessary infrastructure already in place to mine it was like a packet like it was like i hate gold so i i approached you sneaky older- bastard <laughs> i got super lucky so i approached this older gentleman in south carolina i don't want to completely dox his name this guy is so cool he was using this this old panties hose factory as a place to store his collectible cars it was just sitting there it was empty i got there i did one look around the whole place it was perfect. It had the electrical transformers already in place. It had it, it had every it had three phase electricity. It had everything, everything, everything ready to go. So I told him I was like, "Have you ever heard of Bitcoin mining?" He's like, "No." And I'm like, "Let me tell you." So I gave him a small pitch. He was on board, and and yeah, man. And then you know the rest of 2017, we all know how that went. So um, so yeah, man. It was a combination of luck, perseverance. And just being being at the right place at the right time, man, and just taking that leap of faith, getting on that plane and uh, following my cousin and eventually meeting my uncle in Venezuela. And that's what created BitVault. Um, after I created BitVault, it, it is kind of like a passive business. I do work very hard for short periods of time, but I do have a lot of time on my hands. So I decided to start a podcast, which is the BitVault podcast. I, you know, I kind of do exactly what you do. And I also have a 10 minute show. It's called simply Bitcoin. We do, uh, we do, uh, fi- we do, uh, episodes every weekdays. We, we have guests, we had guys, we had guys Swan on, we had Corey Clipston and it's basically just a 10, 10 minute episode of everything that happened with Bitcoin that day. We do meme reviews. We do fails of all the shit coins and we just talk. It, it's, it's a good time. So it's Excellent. called simply Bitcoin. Pretty, it's on YouTube. Pretty brilliant idea with the 10 minutes uh, episodes, you know, because usually people don't have much attention span. They don't, you know, I mean, you can't listen to you know thousands of podcasts. It's like, you know, I mean, even in, in even in Bitcoin space, there aren't that many. I mean, you know, relatively speaking. But let me let me just go back to that one point that you said in the beginning because I hear that story over and over again. It's you know, I guess for m- most of all of us, it's like that. We 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 get into Bitcoin because of the money, and then we get orange pilled. Like, what was like the enlightening moment where you said, you know, this is way more than money, you know, or just accumulating wealth or whatever speculation, what have you. Absolutely. So, look, but I, 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 I've learned this over the years. Uh, hard times create hard men. Weak times create uh, uh, bad times create weak. I mean, good times create weak men, right? So, the fact that I was down in the gutter relatively to my life, right? Um, it, I was desperate to just find something find a purpose and 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 i wrote about this in my article on citadel 21 i didn't have a purpose which we we see a lot with people now day and age that they just go about doing their job and doing their thing but if you don't have a reason to wake up every single morning right then life is just empty so to to kind of go back to your original question what what made me open my eyes well first of all it was absolutely just about the money but then once you start getting into bitcoin and you start figuring out how to store it on a hardware wallet you start you start figuring out how it works you have this in every single bitcoiner that i've talked to has this moment this epiphany Mm -hmm. where they're just like holy crap and and then you're just trying to keep fighting looking for there's no way this is just there's there's no way that this just solves these problems and it does and the more you realize that it does solve all these problems the more your your mind blows and then you start learning about fractional reserve banking then you start learning about you know what the hell happened in the 2008 financial crisis and then you eventually run into all the andreas antonopoulos speeches on youtube which for a period of like three or four Four months i literally watched them yeah. back to back to back mm-hmm. every so, single yeah. night mm-hmm. to three in yeah. the morning mm-hmm. so so that was my experience right what about you alessandro <laughs> what was your first i relate opinion? so much to what <laughs> i th- i believe that my first epiphany i actually got that um i i think i've had many of them right 
I, I think it goes like on layers. You have different different levels of epiphanies uh, when when you get orange built because you just keep going and going and going, and and it's an endless and it's an endless hole, right? Um, but I think that the one that shocked me the most was was after I read Master in Bitcoin in two thousand and seventeen. After I read Master in Bitcoin, I got like to a whole other level that I was like, oh my God. Because before Bitcoin didn't know how to code myself. Now I know pre- it's, not, it's not like I'm going to do you myself an, an app that, or, or a Spark wallet, but I understand pretty much. And that's all thanks to Bitcoin. So uh, reading Master in Bitcoin, going down the technical level at a code level regarding Bitcoin that that opened my mind like a, another dimension right so it's like the, the cold dimension it's it's a part of the world that you either understand and you were seeing it or it's like it's like um the the uh, one of my friend's grandma she's a swiss she's a swiss person so she she, uh, she says like uh, if you don't know you don't see right right if you don't know about it you, you can't see it or you you can't even idealize it and so uh definitely has to do with mastering bitcoin mm. yeah my latest epiphany. <laughs> right. I want to <laughs> get into the censorship resistant uh, stuff. Um, uh, so, what, what are there, uh, do you see any challenges right now, Nico, with um, the censorship resistance? Because there's been discussion going on on Twitter, back and forth between Jura Jura. I had, a, by the way, on my show, and uh, Matt O'Dell and um, Marty Bent. Um, and there's like different, uh, very differentiating opinions, like uh, whether, you know, essentially there's this article which he which he uh, wrote. Um, let me let me see if I can find that uh, just quickly. It's called um, it's called what's it called? How could regulators successfully introduce Bitcoin censorship and other dystopias? Um, can you comment a little bit on that? Did you look into it? Because I don't want to, you know, go into. Te- I, I'm not a techie myself. So, are there? Is there a risk? Is like, is there a risk that you know you could eventually uh, uh, we could have like tainted and non-tainted um, transactions, and and miners could, uh, you know, even with with less than fifty percent hash power, uh, censor transactions. Is is that something you? you know, Absolutely. I, th- I think that's a really interesting topic. And look, I, l- l- first, let me kind of break down my expertise, right? Because I'm, I'm, not a, I'm, not a, I'm not a software guy. I'm not a technical guy. I am a hardware guy and I make videos. Okay, that's what I do, right? So <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me explain it from, from, the, from that perspective. Look, um, for a government to actually like have a good shot at basically censoring Bitcoin, their only avenue is making it ridiculously hard to the, ridiculously hard to buy and sell Bitcoin on the on and off ramps, right? Once Bitcoin mm-hmm. is actually on the Bitcoin network, it becomes increasingly difficult. And governments are in a very tough spot right now. They're in between a rock and a hard place, right? Why do I say that? Because basically... If they make it so, if they start upping up those regulations, you're going to get people like myself, I'm sure like you guys is too, that we're just not going to go back into the dollar. We're just not going to do it. And as time goes by, as as as, as time Never goes met. by, as, as whatever, as the population ages, right, and, and the younger generation, you know, starts to come, which mm-hmm. is about 80% of millennials own, own Bitcoin or some type of cryptocurrency, right? If they make it so difficult, we're just not going to go back. We're ju- we're just not going to go back to the dollar. We're just not going to go back to, you know, the 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 fiat of of that country. We refuse. We refuse to. Right. So what I see Bitcoin as is basically a competition to the dollar. It's it's to keep it in check because mm-hmm. the dollar now has to incentivize people to switch back to using the dollar. Right. Because if they start messing around a little bit and making it extremely difficult or worst case scenario if you see in countries like china or in countries like india or in countries like uh what was it bangladesh where they flat out banned bitcoin guess what happened bitcoin didn't go anywhere and local bitcoins you could still buy bitcoin but you know what the thing that did happen is that the premium for bitcoin actually went higher 
right? So this idea that, you know, Bitcoin could be censored, Bitcoin could be, governments could have, you know, th this type of control, I, I, I do not see it. I, 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 think, I think it's impossible, in my, in my opinion. What they can do, and what is the very high probability that we'll see some type of Western country doing this in the future, is they'll make it they'll make the on and off ramps extremely difficult but when they do that guess what happens there's a whole uh, there's a bunch of other countries that are more than happy to pick up that business exactly. and that's the only reason that the u.s has not banned bitcoin at this point because if they ban bitcoin they put themselves at a severe disadvantage to china to europe that are more than willing to pick up mm -hmm. those customers from the united states right so gov governments are in a very tough spot i'm very optimistic about that in particular but uh but yeah that, that those are my thoughts on that and what about KYC? I mean, do you think they will? You know, it's not even the, the regular, as, uh, as I'm reading, you know, through these uh, the Twitter threads, you know, this discussion going on in the article, it's not even like the regulators of the state. It's actually this unelected, you know, uh, tyrannical uh, entity called FATF uh, that's sort of trying to, uh, you know, push so far, you know, into um making non-kyc um transactions uh tainted is 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 like because you know that's why we always say you know fuck kyc i mean who uh you know who needs kyc so so the governments are headed towards this direction of central bank digital currencies. Every major country is pushing this idea. And the reason that they're pushing this idea is because it's extremely easy to monitor. It's extremely easy to tax. It's extremely easy to just basically control the population, essentially, right? Because imagine if, you, if you're if you a government and you knew every single transaction this person does, right? They're moving away from cash. But the hope, the shining light, and all this, uh, the, uh, and all this, you know, scary future is Bitcoin. Because once you stay in the Bitcoin network, no matter if your coins are tainted or whatever, it doesn't matter. You could still send that freely to anybody. Exactly. Whether so it's mixed, idea, whether it's it went through the coin mixer or you know coin join. It, or it, it, yeah. it doesn't matter. It mm -hmm. could it could have it could belong to this this narco drug dealer, and the U.S. sees that it belongs to the narco drug dealer. But what if people right stop? There is this really awesome meme, and it's by like it's by Morpheus. Where Morpheus is like, so you're saying if I sell if 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 if, if I keep Bitcoin, I'm gonna be rich, and then Morpheus no, I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to sell uh, I'm gonna be able to sell it for millions of dollars later, and then Morpheus is like. This awesome meme says, no, Neo, I'm trying to tell you that yeah. you won't have to, right? Yeah. So basically what he means by that is, <laughs> is eventually this, this idea that you're going to have to sell back to dollars to spend whatever you want. If they, if they keep making the regulations more, more scarier and dystopian, people like oppressive. you, oppressive, exactly, they're just not going to sell back to dollars. I'm, I'm myself... I, I live on Bitcoin, right? My savings are in Bitcoin. They're in Bitcoin. I do not use the US dollar. As soon as I get paid, I convert that to Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. So, And there's a lot of people that are like this. And when they make it harder for us to, 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 to transact back to dollars or they're trying to all this KYC BS and whatever – it's not what it's not it's, it's not going to work what they're trying to do is that they're trying to use the old rules of the old legacy financial system and they're trying to apply it on a decentralized honey badger which is bitcoin and it's impossible and they're going to learn a very hard lesson but it's going to be a very bloody fight for sure you know i feel more relieved fire me up <laughs> Nico. so alessandro are you still here <laughs> yes i am Actually, well, regarding KYC and AML and all that, I mean, all the banking system globally is structured that way. And it's banks that have people's money. If it's not banks, it's brokers or investment banks. And then in the end, it's all financial institutions. But to them, when you talk, when you talk, about, when you talk with them about KYC and anti-money laundering, et cetera, it's sugar for them. OK, it's it's the sugar they that they literally put every single day inside their cup of coffee, mm -hmm. literally. And so th that's our problem for them. But it is a problem for them when you get this 
magical techno technological money transmission layer in which you can transact money without even knowing people's name. So that that's a huge deal. And, and I mean, it's, it's, taking, it's taking me so long when I speak to bankers, hedge fund managers, right? And trying to like break the cusp out of them and like op open the egg and ha hatch the egg. And eventually the egg will keep hatching, okay? They will come to understand that there's no going back because the problem right now is like, They, they don't care at a technological level how this shit works. They just care how they are going to make money and how they're going to be keep being compliant with governments. Because, I mean, in modern economies, the figure of a banker is essential to any economy. A, ba a banker, in, in a way, is like one of the best friends of... Of, of government officials, literally. They reach deals. Every time they need to issue a credit for something that went bust, they reach an internal deal that we literally don't know about. And so it's all based on closed doors. So when you bring this, when you bring this thing to the table that is an open door in which, that is living in, in a dimension in which literally Maduro can have billions of dollars and a banker could have billions of dollars and micro strategy in the United States can have billions of dollars uh, at, at the same time it's like okay so how do we how do we sort of break this and reorganize it for us to understand and keep track of it and then eventually what i think that will happen is they more financial institutions and more which are the cusp and this and the main basis for doing kyc nowadays will eventually have their own digital asset departments or have their very close bodies that make them understand like, okay, this is a generational thing that you will never be able to change. And eventually nobody will care about KYC. We will see a growing number of peer-to-peer -peer markets, uh, peer -peer markets, marketplaces and trades keep, keep continuing picking up. And th that's what I see. And that's what we're fl frankly seeing on, on the time and not only the time. And, and, and that's, for instance, why we get things like local Bitcoins and BISC network. And we're trying to build this non-custodial tools, etc. But we are seeing at the same time regulators like, for example, look at FinCEN. FinCEN is now finding people that do coin mixing for up to $60 million dollars. But when, when you actually study that and, and, we, and we try to like dismantle it, what do, what do you get from that? I mean, you're, you're finding $60 million dollars to some random dudes that are running uh, some magical coins on, on a $300 hardware setup. So, so a, a regulation will get old. The, the thing is that we are living in this economy that, you know, The main economic-based vision of the world right now, coming from baby boomers, is a Keynesian vision. Mm -hmm. And so that, that like, it, it, that's a vision of economies that doubles down on government intervention inside mm -hmm. economies. And so once governments, once government, governments got the ability to grasp that, they just double down and start to incentivize it, the, the Keynesian view, uh, views of economies. It's like, why do you go to a college in Venezuela and study economics and nobody talks to you about Austrian economics? Why does everyone talk? talk yeah. What each teacher tells you is like the Keynesian side of the world, exactly, the Keynesian yeah. side of economies. And you, you ask any economy, any economic up, student, they never heard about, to... you know, they never heard about Austrian economies, like the classical ones, you know, maybe Nothing. one or two hours. Nothing. That was it. That's it, you know, but never, never, ever, you know, they, uh, they've been taught like the mar free market I'm, principles. I, or... I mean, the... <clears throat> yeah, so. And, and so literally my point, so little, my, li literally my point is, Money was controlled by banks. Eventually, Bitcoin got in the middle. And so we created a cyberspace bank because it, it's a bank, but it's in, it's, it's in the cyberspace. And so we are not, it's like we are advocates of, of open banking, but we are all coming from undergrounds, man. Like we're coming from the roots, like literally. And, and they're, they're like on the heaven of money. And so eventually, like, we will, heaven will come down to earth 
and we will meet each other and we will have to party with each other and drink wine with each other. Right. But like uh, it, it, is a it, is a it is a transition and it is a very hard one. What I think that nobody's looking at is that first world, first world countries and developed economies, just like the United States, are using regulations under favor, trying to crack down as much as possible on international Bitcoin operations, mm -hmm. be it mining, be it peer-to-peer -peer markets, be it exchanges, OTC desks, whatever. They are trying to crack, that, uh, crack down on that as much as possible because they are late for the race, man. It, 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 teenagers got first into this rather than bankers. Mm -hmm. And so that's a huge problem for bankers and regulators because for them, it's like, how do, you, how do we wash out all of these dudes that have this sort of power in this space, and we grab that to try to overregulate and for our own advantage, this space that has been created for the past 13 years. I think they will be, uh, frankly, unable to do so. And, uh, but, but, but that's, that's why I believe that we are seeing things like, why is the Grayscale Bitcoin Investment Trust in the United States buying the, be the, the biggest amount of Bitcoins that anyone is buying right now on the market. Why is, why is Square Cash App selling almost $2 billion in Bitcoin on a quarter? Why is now PayPal all of a sudden has have everything figured out and nobody knew, nobody knew about that? Everyone expected that, but nobody, nobody knew about that. And so it, it, it's a thing like even the Silicon Valley guys need to behave as as, as good boys and good CEOs in the front of the U.S. government, the U.S. Senate, U.S. Congress. And so I am sure, man, Nico and Kivan, that there are a bunch of internal agreements that we don't know about right now, especially inside the United States and Europe and China, that will, will drastically change the game to favor governments getting inside the race. Because they are late for this. Yeah, that's and eventually you, we will way. see governments. About eventually Iran. we will see governments just like Venezuela and, 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 and the government in, in Lebanon and the government in Iran going all in and on fav in favor of this. But not before they've already figured out like an, at least a basic internal strategy that nobody knows about to crack down on this guy and on this guy and on this guy. And fuck them up and just let us grab those bitcoins, man. Let's just, let's just bankrupt these guys. And and that's the thing that KYC does. When you have this, it, it's like literally you are Gutenberg. You created the printing press, and then the government can, comes in and says like, you cannot use that. You can't use the printing press to create like uh, to, to to print out news and newspapers and whatever. And so KYC, the only thing that I, that I see it right now, it's like it's a thing that brings up costs. It massively for any financial intermediary service that you want to build based on digital assets. And so KYC is a reality in the US, in Venezuela, in Switzerland regarding digital assets. And I think it will be a reality in every single jurisdiction globally because jurisdiction governments that are late for this and don't have the right teams to figure out the way to draft efficient regulations because who, who, who the fuck supports Bitcoin and then thinks like, oh, I'm going to be a sender. No way, man. Because we literally see this thing that it will even crack down on, gov on government entities. And, and so other juris jurisdictions and other nations, what I see them doing is copying just other regulations that were drafted in Switzerland, other regulations regulations that were drafted in Venezuela and the United States, it will be the easiest and faster, fastest way to do so. And then eventually everybody will, will be like, okay, KYC is a normal. And then the technological layer will come in. Because the guys that have the knowledge, the guys that have the, the technological understanding behind this, and, and, and frankly, is a generational thing. The teenagers that are right now 15 years old will eventually be 21 years old, just like Nico was talking about this and they will they they will not care about this jurisdictional level I think I think that uh, uh, k kids that today have 10 years are 10 years old by the they are 15 years old 16 years old 
they will they will already know how to pro program in seven different programming languages. And so once you're able to do that, you run your own node, you you build your own app, you build your own website, you build your own podcast, you build your own everything, and you literally live in cyberspace where you get more friendlier regulations rather than in the real realm and like reality, man. I, I just I just see cyberspace to continue picking up as as I think that will be more powerful than traditional jurisdictions and KYC will be will be like okay KYC is there but we don't give a fuck about KYC exactly and you will yeah. be able to go underneath KYC as much as you want man it's already happening and will just continue to pick up right so 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 it's like summarizing for myself is it, it literally means that the regulators or whatever the governments and even these you know unelected officials uh fatf financial as, as action task force they're actually shooting themselves in the foot with all this hyper regulation over regulation pushing they're, right they're, they're screwed they're screwed mm -hmm. they, they, they can't do anything they're, 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 they're what, what you're seeing right now and what we're lucky enough to be alive to witness is the disintermediation of money right, right. and the internet has completely disintermediated mm -hmm. everything it's 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 come across with so in music right when napster and limewire first came about you know and the record companies were like no mm -hmm. we're not gonna let that happen guess what happened no. the internet the internet won and then um and then the 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 you know the long distance providers the, the whatever so they're all gonna team in together no we can't let that happen and what happened the people that didn't adapt right blockbuster didn't adapt Netflix adapted to the internet, right? So the, the, the long distance providers, they became internet service providers to survive, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing right now is mm -hmm. the disintermediation of money. Banks were a necessary evil because and, there was is, no other way to do it. But which is not going to be frictionless. Right? There was no other way to do so. Yeah, and it's so, not going to so be frictionless, right? I mean, um, there's still some. This is sort of the friction process, like we're going through, right? Well, no, I mean it's 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 a, it's going to be a war because <laughs> the people remember that there's a lot of people. And you were talking, Alessandro was talking about the teachers that were teaching Keynesian economics, mm -hmm. and you got Nouriel, and you got all these. Forgive yeah, my language, dumbasses on Twitter. Yeah. You know, saying like Bitcoin, Warren Buffett, uh, Rat Poison Squared. Man, those people lose. Remember, I was talking about purpose earlier. Those mm -hmm. people lose their purpose. Right. Remember, 30 years Obsolete. of studying this monetary policy, and then all of a sudden, this guy, Satoshi Nakamoto, boom. came out of nowhere and just completely and like, boom. Just, just created this atomic bomb of, of, of in the financial world. And these people, whether they like it or not, they will get destroyed if they don't adapt, right? What we see today, look, mark my words, the Wells Fargo's, the, the, the Bank of America's, the, the way that you see them right now, they will not survive 15 years. 15 years from now, those institutions will be a radically different than they are today. Without they fighting are no them. no longer necessary. Without they fighting them, obsolete. Nico, right? Without, without we, fighting, Link. Without fighting. No, way, you know, no need to waste energy. That's what yeah. Mark Minster Fula, I think, always, you know, tried to say. is like, don't don't fight the old establishment, the system, you know, just, just create new structures, new systems. I, I fight it and everyone fights it every day. And you know how you fight it? You opt out. Exactly. They need your money. Those banks need your money to survive. Bitcoin doesn't need anybody's money to survive. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, they're all fractionally reserved. They need money to make money. Uh -huh. They need people mm -hmm. in the deposits to make money. Guess what happens when everyone says, dude, I'm tired of paying this $10 maintenance fee. Why am I getting charged an overdraft fee of $35? Like, why am I going to do whatever? Dude, these banks, Wells Fargo makes $10 billion a year in overdraft fees, right? Mm -hmm. $10 billion. Why do you need that anymore? Exactly. You don't, right? Yeah. So because of And, and Wells Fargo is such a crappy bank, man. It's such a crappy bank. Absolutely, the, the, the stuff that they've I mean, done. I, I mean, it's all broken. I, I mean, and, and, and I know we can talk about this like on, on the front row, Nico, because we are one of those few Venezuelans that were able to travel to the U.S., have your own U.S. bank account, try different bank accounts like JP Morgan mm -hmm. Chase, Bank of America, and, 
And like, all, it's like, I don't want to be, I don't want to sound rude at all when I say this, but although we come from one of the most depressed economies in the world, we are literally not African children. We are literally not those kind of people that will never have like uh, a bank account that have never used like, like a, a debit card to make a payment at a supermarket. We are not those kind of guys, man. And so uh, uh, what I see is like, eventually you were talking about fractional reserves. And I, was and I was talking about governments trying to figure out a way to have an advantage at, at, at this race because it's because governments have the ability to make it an unfair race at a certain level. It's like they are able to run with us and kick you in the foot and drop you in the middle of the street <laughs> while we are right. And, and, and the referee will say nothing. Mm -hmm. What is it that we got? What is that we have to do? We, wish, we just stand up once again and, and keep running faster. Because we're already trained for this, and eventually we, we will we will win the race. Uh, you win the race by training, not by cheating, in a sense, especially this one. So what I see is that part of that advantage that U.S. has been trying to figure out, you see it. I mean, J.P. Morgan Chase is now opening bank accounts to Coinbase and Gemini. And so I do, I do see this future in which eventually you will see, like, the Winklevi become part of the board of directors of J.P. Morgan Chase, and you will see uh, uh, re uh, fractional reserve banking apply to Bitcoin, Bitcoin deposits within the United States. It's like J.P. Morgan Chase will eventually be able to have 100,000 Bitcoins and print a bunch amount, such amounts of dollars out of those Bitcoin deposits. But it, it all comes up to that part that it's like, okay, it's scarce money they there's no fucking way there's no there's just no fucking way this that this dudes can create two bitcoins out of one bitcoin exactly yeah. and so event eventually that's what what that's what people will figure out because <sighs> this whole thing has a markup, has a marker, right? It has a public market and it's Bitcoin's price. And of course that if Jerome Powell goes tomorrow uh, and ap appears tomorrow in front of Fox News or whatever he's saying, yes, the Fed is figuring out a way for us to cust custody Bitcoin ourselves. What, I mean, he can do that, but we're all, I'm sure that they have already been talking about that. Okay, I, I, it's 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 just look. Uh, I so, so go ahead. You were talking about basically trying to re so in Catlett Long, which she started uh, the first or the second actually after Kraken uh, Crypto Bank in uh, in Wyoming, Wyoming, and she had such a good point, right? Avanti. Because what you, what you're talking about is rehypoth uh, Avanti, yes, yeah. exactly. So she Avanti, uh, yeah, Avanti. That that's the name of the bank that she she started. An awesome, awesome lady. Uh, yeah. she came from traditional finance, and yeah. she she made an amazing point. She said, and I'll never forget this tweet. She says they will eventually try to rehypothecate Bitcoin, mm -hmm. but the problem is right is that there's no one to bail you out. Exactly. Yeah. As soon as you, there's no big brother, there's no big brother government that says, hey, look, you made a mistake. You know, you're, we, we, you need to, oh, sorry. Uh, there we go. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah she yeah. brought a <laughs> lot of clarity, a lot of clarity and, and transparency into this whole space in Wyoming. It's like secession going on with Wyoming. It's, it's crazy what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, Kraken based in Wyoming is a crypto bank as well. Yeah, so that's done huge, man. Really huge work. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Well well, I mean go go ahead, Nick. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Um so so basically they will not pe um people or banks or wh whoever tries to start fractionally reserving Bitcoin, they don't have Big Brother to bail them mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. They don't have big uh, big brother, I mean the uh, the Fed, right? To bail them out if they, excuse my language, shit the bed. Guess what? They're screwed completely. So yes, they're gonna try to rehypothecate it. They're gonna try to play the old game. But the the very nature of Bitcoin being capped at twenty one million, right? And the very fact that there's no there's no central anything. There's no central bank. There's only hodlers. Right. So if you start trying to play with fire and there's a there's a there was a there was an exchange or, mm -hmm. or 
service that failed the other day. It's called I Have Cred, where they had $500 million in liabilities and they only had $100 million in assets. That's the, it, and guess what? They have to go bankrupt and their loser and their users lose money. There's no one to bail you out. As soon as you start playing the game with fire of rehypothecation, of fractionally reserving, as soon as you go bust, there is no one to bail you out. There's no such thing in Bitcoin as too big to fail. There is no such thing, unlike every mm -hmm. other major U.S. bank. There, there is too big to fail mm -hmm. because the Fed is um, bail you out. But in Bitcoin, you are screwed, right? So I, I think that in the beginning, they will try to do that. But as soon as one huge guy, um, <coughs> BlockFi, um, crashes, you know, you're gonna, you, you, <laughs> people are going to learn their lesson. Uh, can I ask you, uh, because we had, I had a talk yesterday with Emil Sandstedt, who, you know, who is like totally into the history of money, the failed, you know, fiat money, the catastrophic experiment that's been going on for, for such a long time. And with, uh, what's his name, Econa Alchemist and MetaMech, that's the Twitter handles. So uh, we're talking about also about the CBDC, central bank digital currencies. What's your position, you guys? I mean, on, on I mean, it's like this, the last attempts, you know, the last desperate attempts of this oligarchist, this, you know, fascist uh -huh. uh, system to, to, you know, to, to, to practice their, their obsessive, you know, con uh, the control obsession, you know, over humanity. Uh, where do you think, you know, this, this whole thing ties into, you know, Bitcoin and, or, or, are we, I mean, are we going to see like a like a like a split society where where we're going to have like a majority of people controlled through you know central bank digital currency app where essentially we're going to have like a you know people are gonna, uh, they want to control people like the social credit score system of China. Um, so um, so here are my thoughts on central bank digital currencies. First of all a big percentage of the poor population is going to love it. Second of all, it's absolutely terrifying mm -hmm. because now, and, and this even, this puts banks in an even worse position yeah. because Wells Fargo, uh -huh. Chase, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're the literally, yeah. they're, they're completely gone. Now you're exactly. going to have a, a Fed app on your phone, right? But, a here, Fed here, app on your but phone, man. here's the problem. The federal government or the central bank will not allow you to move money freely as much as bitcoin you're going to have to ask permission you're going they're going to automatically deduct taxes they're going to see what you're spending right so as as i said earlier as the population ages man you're gonna you're gonna have a choice you're gonna have the easy convenient fast you know reversing transactions a c uh, a central bank digital currency or you're gonna have the choice of freedom it's not as fast it's not as whatever but you know for a fact if that if i send um alessandro money in venezuela i don't have to ask permission that i'm sending some some money in venezuela and they say why are you sending money to venezuela fill out this sheet and all the bureaucracy that comes with it because they're not going to do it without it they they cannot have a system that is completely open like bitcoin right it a large percentage of the population will use it right but I don't see it as a direct competition to Bitcoin. What I see central bank digital currencies as, if I was the CEO of Wells Fargo, if I was the CEO of Chase, if I was the CEO of whatever, and you're seeing applications like the Cash App that literally acts like a bank account and gives you the ability to buy Bitcoin, man, mm -hmm. they're obsolete. They're, they're going to disappear, but like very, very quickly very quickly, just like the music industry disappeared as soon as the iPod released. It's going to be that quite, it's gonna mm -hmm. be that quick. It's going to be a little bit in the beginning and then all at once, right? So I don't see it that much a direct competition to Bitcoin. I see it as a direct competition in the annihilation of traditional retail banks. I so see that, it the same way. I yeah. see it the same way. Mm-hmm. So is that why Lagarde, like, you know, the once criminally convicted president of of, of, <laughs> of the European Central Bank, is pushing for the digital euro central bank to, because they know this is their last straw, you know, to 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 eliminate the the commercial banks, the banking system in totality, like out of the equation, and like have a super centralized system. Is that is that the agenda? You think or so? So she has a well. I, so sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alessandro. 
So what I think that we also need to take into consideration is the fact that how is how it is structured, like uh, overseas banking regulations. Literally, if you even if you're a bank in Europe, you require to do business with a U.S. banking institution, which holds a U.S. banking license to be able to deposit dollars in, on behalf of others, etc. And so, even if if you want to send like money from Europe to Peru to someone who has a Peruvian bank account and you want to use the banking system, you literally need to wire and, and reroute the money via U.S. servers. And so what, what I think that other governments are actually also trying to achieve with central bank digital currencies is overruling existing banking United States regulations. Literally, man. Figuring out a way to create this new tool, this new technological thing that they start incentivizing in different ways. Look, and, 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 then, we'll, and then we will jump into the, the El Petro example in Venezuela to sort of find some parallel things that might happen in Europe and China. Uh, but they, they will figure out a way to do like, okay, this is, this is a digital currency that was created by the European Central Bank. And because it was created by the European Central Bank, if you want to send money overseas, using the, the Euro Central Bank digital currency, you will not have to wire that money or reroute it in any way to the, to the United States. Or through the SWIFT system, through, or you mean through the SWIFT or, system, or through, right? Or through, or through the SWIFT SIFT system, that's, that's correct. And that's why Iran, and, you know, said, you know, we're going to buy Bitcoin directly from the miners. I mean, you know, it's a very, very regular, very like state interfering, you know, in this whole stupid regime. But anyway, I think it's a good step right forward. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I thought this has also maybe some implications it, for Venezuela it, too. It, 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 it does. And so what I think that's also kind of bullish is the fact that, okay, does the U.S. dollar right now have it, have, has, does it have an API? No, man. You need to work with a private institution that, have a, that has a license that will charge you obscene fees just to connect your, your app. That yep. is, that your app is yep. literally costing you in the time to develop it $3,000 to $5,000. And you have an app uh, approved on the app store, but you are being charged by, let's say, I don't know, prime trust in, in the United States, ten thousand dollars a month just to connect to the servers. That's another positive thing that central bank digital currencies will try to leverage because you will see an API to connect to the euro digital uh, digital currency to the Chinese digital ba dig uh, central bank digital currency, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so what, what I also think that will happen if we take into consideration the El Petro example, it's like government will sort of incentivize the usage of digital currencies well, with respect, when comparing them to traditional and, leg and their legacy version, right, inside their own jurisdictions, because, because they have to, to do so. Then. And so, and, and so it, it literally you'll see, uh, uh, perhaps you will see more friendlier tax regulations mm -hmm. towards digital ba central bank digital currencies. Like if you pay with the central bank digital currencies directly, will literally pay less taxes mm -hmm. and they will be automatically charged just as Nico said, etc. Look at, look at, uh, uh, Maduro. What did Maduro do? Maduro said like, literally you now have the ability to pay for gasoline using El Petro. And I did so, man. I did so for the first time two weeks ago and I paid with a, you know, it's all, it's only a digital tent a digital stamp on an app that says you have this many El Petro units. I bought those Petros at a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace that is in Bolivares in Venezuela for $20. And then the government receives those Petros back for $60 at the gas station. So literally the government multiple, multiplied by three times my money just to incentivize me to use El Petro. So Absolutely. I think that we will see those sort of things, but in their own, like with regard regarding their own their own like 
a version of of how they will subsidize the usage of their uh, this independent central bank digital currencies in Europe and Asia and United States, etc. We will see those things co- uh, p- pick up. I I I I'm tr- I'm I'm so I'm so sure of that. And then the other thing that I'm sure that will happen is that they will create new credit issuing mechanisms that will not be dependent on the traditional legacy right. banking system. That's huge. Yeah. They will, and they will issue credit themselves directly to small mer- small merchants or private companies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, uh, man, it, it, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's just, it's, it's, it's so, so many, so many things, so many moving pieces like going on and, yeah, man. And yeah, it, but you know, at the at the end of all this, Bitcoin is the shining light. You know, Bitcoin is freedom. Yeah. And central bank digital currencies is dystopia, right? So, um, I I have faith in humanity, right? I have faith yeah. in people, mm-hmm. and I think that once they start to see the limitations, right? Because these 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 currencies cannot exist without limitations. They they they're doing this for control and to tax you right Right. for them they see Mm -hmm. you as as a cash cow right so you know and and Mm -hmm. to go back to um the 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 lady of the european central bank this is a quote from her and it's extremely telling she says it's more important to have a job Mm -hmm. than to save money that's right so so that is stupid right that is that in itself is extremely telling what yeah. what what how she views her fellow human beings right? right she doesn't see them as you know save for your family save for a better future save for whatever no 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 she sees you as a way to collect taxes to co- to collect income it's like it's like the new it's like the neo bourgeoisie man yeah, it's like yeah. this new version of no, this is of, slavery of and crack fuels. they want slavery and control on crack and this is what i what i'm really concerned about but now that you're talking you know explaining all these things to me again you know and 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 i see things you know also from all from different perspective and i always knew of you course know, once the money is fixed once we have you know this 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 final, it's hard, it's scarce, it's decentralized money that is totally censorship resistant. I mean, th- structurally, there's going so many changes, so many transformations taking place on every level people can't even imagine. That's This is what makes me a little bit sad. It's like people can't even imagine what kind of abundance of, and prosperity people are going to have, you know, humanity in totality. Absolutely. And, and you yeah. know... So- yeah, man, again, if you don't know, you don't see <laughs> yeah, so I think I think I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your mind a little bit, uh, Alessandro. So if you don't know, you don't see. Go ahead. It's it's out of mind, out of sight. <laughs> out of mind, out of out sight. Out of mind, yeah. out of sight. But um, so nice one, buddy. <laughs> so um, so yeah, man. Like it, it's I, I I'm hopeful. Like I said before, I think that Bitcoin's education machine, at, at Bitcoin's propaganda is so powerful and people like people don't understand how effective memes are you know it, it's like this joke or whatever it's like money printer go burr yeah it makes you laugh but man it, it, it's so effective of of educating those people because of it, 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 in the beginning bitcoin pulls you in it trojan horses you with yeah. this idea of orange coin good number go up technology but once you are in your your mind just like oh my god i've been being scammed this whole time yeah yeah it's this real like enlightenment and Uh also like uh developing sort of a Uh you know a kind of an ethos and vision i think people uh begin to develop because you know as you said a lot of people could go for the high time preference sort of you know maybe even speculative or you know get rich get rich quick or something um, uh, scenario, but then I think uh, there's a lot of people I have gotten to know now in the Bitcoin space who really went so deep into the rabbit hole that now you know you, you you're feeling it. You know, it's more about like the ethos behind it, the bigger, much much bigger vision behind mm-hmm. it. You know? And what we can structurally mm-hmm. really transform. You know, so, so yeah. I think that it's uh, the other thing is that. Um, 
I love when John Vallis, right? This dude comes yeah. in and says on his show, like, okay, I know I love the talk, the financial talk and the banking talk regarding Bitcoin, et cetera. And I, and I love, and he loves that. And he's mentioned that several times, right? Every single time on show, basically almost. But he also asks people like, what, what does this really uh, like make you uh, 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 travel to where does this where does bitcoin really take you into inside your mind like what is the bitcoin world that bitcoin world that you were actually envisioning and so i i think that it's massively important to to uh, remember that within jurisdictions in the creation of money and etc and 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 try to uh, like you know create developed economies as economy uh, economists call them. You need private property. You fucking need private property. And so, private property today is a fucked up term. You don't have that. You literally you almost don't have that globally. Mm. And so, Bit- Bitcoin will literally function as this thing. That will is, is Nico talk is Nico speaking because we we can yeah, hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. You're you're moving your mouse, but we can't hear you. Did you mute yourself? No, we can't hear you. Uh, maybe some kind of okay. connection problem. Yeah. All right. Hello. Can you hear? Me? Yeah. No. Uh, there, okay. there you go, man. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, sorry, Alessandro. When you said that, okay, because I, I I did an episode on simply Bitcoin yesterday about this, and man, it is absolutely terrifying what the what the World Economic Forum. There is a video that was yeah. that was flouted about, and in this advertisement, I, I don't know if you could look it up, uh, Kivan. It, it, it literally says the first eight seconds of the video. It says. You will own nothing and be happy. It was absolutely terrifying and telling. And so, and yeah. and so, and so you see, man. I, I, that's part of that's part of my view of the world. My view of, of the world regarding government is a socialist approach. It's like socialism will continue spreading, especially because who's now ruling the global economy is not the United States. It's China. It's fucking China. Literally, the U.S. pushed the game as hard as they could with the, with the financial markets, uh, with their financial markets bonanza and stupidity. Hey, Kiva. Oh, oh, sorry, I lost you guys for a second. They literally pushed the, to the limits what they could do with financial markets, and so now we are at a point. Not even financial markets are defending private property. Because when you are literally debasing the monetary base every single month or every single quarter or every single year or whatever, what you're actually doing is you're giving that money back to the government, back to government officials, the, the central parts of the government, and then you're giving it specific, you're pointing, you're pointing to, to which financial institutions you are going to subsidize with that monetary debasement. The moment that you started doing that as a routine, you are destroying and you are shitting on top of private property. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, total Literally, socialism. Man. Yeah, totally. Literally, man. Yeah. And, and, and so that's a, that's a thing that I believe that Today we understand about uh, today we understand Bitcoin as a currency, as a cyberspace bank, whatever. We have this different views and different levels of how you see it, and it's all dependent on how much you have studied and how much you've been on the backs of Bitcoin, right? But I am very bullish on the fact, and you know that I've mentioned this before, Kivan. To me, it's not only a currency; it's not only like a cyber bank, whatever. It's a whole nation and it's a whole new continent with its own language, its own monetary policies, its own fiscal policies, its own taxation policies, with, which are the, net, the, net, the fees that we pay to the network. And so it has its own laws, its own language again. And so eventually regulators, a new, a new generation of regulators will eventually come in 
And we'll start seeing this shit as a as an independent continent that was literally built on top of the internet. And that will finally become will come to be the piece that will let that will allow the internet to be what it was supposed to be when it was being created, which is a neutral jurisdiction for the globe. Because yes. today it is no longer a neutral jurisdiction, my man. It is no longer that. But Bitcoin will come to be this part of the internet that will literally allow people to see the internet as an independent jurisdiction that has its own laws. And, and, when, and when other governments start looking at Bitcoin as an independent country or independent government, what do you do with other governments of other countries? You don't regulate them. You do trade deals with them. And so I, 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 am, I am bullish on the fact that over the long term, we will see a more friendly stance toward Bitcoin inside government regulations. But the, the path to getting there will be extremely harsh, extremely harsh, up to a point that we will, like, like maybe today we are almost allowed to, to talk about this openly, but will we see eventually a world in which we see regulators sending you a letter to your home, Kivan. We, we should expect that. We should expect that. Yeah. And in a way, we should, man, because nobody is expecting that. You see, nobody is expecting that. And uh, and frankly, all of our views and stance and what we discuss here, they are all based on on what we get feet with on social media, mm -hmm. on social media and news. And nine uh, out of ten of those topics are all programmed bullshit. Programmed bullshit. And so, again, I am bullish on the fact that long term, we will come to see Bitcoin as a superior jurisdiction than all of the other jurisdictions that we have already based. But it will be a harsh path and slow path to yes. get there. Because, we, mm -hmm. because it is... Because it is dependent on a generational wave, yeah. And so eventually, this 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 wave of 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 today's regulators will come to end, will come to an end because of natural things, and and the millennial wave of regulators will eventually come in and start seeing crypto cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, as a whole new other thing. It's like a, a superior stuff. And in that sense, what I have, the last thing that I, I want to bring to the table, guys, is like, I was, I just finished up reading uh, one of Google's book. Like, it's like literally the Google story. That's how it's named. And it amazed me how when in 2004, Sergey and Larry introduced Gmail to the world. And US regulators came in saying, this is blasphemy. They even started introducing like anti demo laws within the United States, which is crazy. And now look at how we use Gmail 16 years later, right? right? Which is basically like, like, right? It's like the standard for, for email today. And so the same thing will, will continue happening to Bitcoin in the, over this next five to 10 years especially with central banks trying to get into the race and creating their own ver versions and their own digital currencies. It's like, how many years does Christine Lagarde have left, man? Yeah. I don't know, but it's not 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know? no. So, and, and, and yeah, look, you're exactly right, man. And, and, and I think we're going to, we're this year, this, this decade is going to be a battle. It's yeah. going to be a battle. Just how it's, it's going to be a battle. Just, I see it that way. Just how every other industry that was disintermediated by the internet, there was a battle. In the beginning, they denied it. In the beginning, they all they all bounded together. We will not allow this to happen. And then eventually, you know, they had to adopt or they died, right? And and this 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 idea of central bank digital currencies, it, it's it's a reaction to Bitcoin. It's mm -hmm. a reaction to Bitcoin. This would not have come mm -hmm. about if mm -hmm. it was not for Bitcoin. Yeah. This is a reaction to Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. They're trying to keep their old system, their old purpose, their old positions of power 
right? But if you cannot have immutable, uncensorable, decentralized money, you can't make you can't make central bank digital currencies compete with Bitcoin because eventually people will see the truth of what of what they mean and the dangers of that, right? So, man, it's going to be blood. There's going to be a lot of blood on the streets in this de- next decade. And let, let's see what happens. And, oh, yeah, and man. To, to go back to your, your point of, of, of this, of this global, globalism versus nationalism, which you're seeing a lot of, right? Um, especially, you know, with, with, when you're seeing, you know, the, the, the push of central bank digital currencies, um, the reaction of China. China went up to Davos and basically said, yes, globalism. And then, uh, and then uh, Donald Trump was like, no, nationalism, countries first, right? So there's an epic war right now. And this term globalism is just, it's, it's a new way of saying socialism. It's socialism um, you know, in, in, in camouflage, right? Because right. that's really what it is. These people don't watch it. And, and I sent the video to, uh, I sent the video to yeah, Yvonne. Maybe I'm going to check out later. I'll put it in the show notes, but I'm not even sure. Can I show that on, on you know, sort of on a public uh, podcast or is that yeah, absolutely. for educational sure purposes? Just, yeah, yeah. Just show the first 10 seconds yeah. of it. Yeah. So yeah. So this is a. So this is literally like a what a video from a, a, a commercial from the World Economic Forum. Yeah. Look what it says. You don't even need to play it. Look what it says there. They had to. You'll delete. own nothing and you'll be happy. Whatever you want for yeah, rent. Oh you, my God. Yeah. This I, is. Yeah, this I've is. This partially. Oh my God. Yeah. This is mind-boggling. Dominate. The, you won't die. <laughs> this is this is a socialist utopia. This is a socialist utopia. That's what's going on. You'll eat much. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're I mean, selling. I'm a meat eater. I mean, I used to be vegan for six, seven years. I'm. A, I love meat, and nobody's gonna take away my so, steak. So. so they had to delete this. <laughs> they had to delete this video because of for an occasional seat not a sample they're telling you what to do they're telling you the the climate change thing is also it's not a hoax climate change is real but it's it's a way for them to get power mm-hmm. integrating more refugees you know pay to make carbon this is all yeah, a power a grab scientific this is, fraud yeah this so, is socialism yeah, it's agenda this for is, itself yeah socialism the beginning mm-hmm. they get a, a male model that says that smiles and says You'll own nothing. You'll be happy. You'll rent. Who yeah. are you? Re- who are yeah. you renting from? Exactly. Who, Trust who, the who, scientists. The who, scientists. Who you, yeah. Who, Western values have been tested to avoid a wedding point. Western values are the only thing that are keeping us like moral and civilized. The Western mm-hmm. values aren't a bad thing. So this guy and the West, the, the, the Global Economic Forum, is pushing this idea of globalism. And they call it the Great Reset, and it's absolutely freaking terrifying. It's terrifying. The first mm-hmm. thing that they tell you, and they do it nonchalantly. They had to delete that off YouTube yeah. because it literally got ninety nine percent dislikes, one percent like from I guess the communists in North Korea. But you know, like it, it's 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 absolutely terrifying. They're trying to basically incept you with this idea and like condition no, people you'll be they, happy yeah they're trying to like brainwash and condition people right yeah rent for the rest of your life rent for work rent don't save anything just spend it all and that, that, that's what these central bank digital currencies yeah. want you to do yeah and the sad thing is the left is you know these young people who are into like environmental you know co2 bullshit and they are very susceptible to this kind of brainwashing unfortunately you know and who don't understand really the, the true agenda yeah. and you know the facts behind behind it? Yeah, exactly. They they think they they're morally justified. That's how they that's how they trap you. That's how they incept you. You think you're morally a good person because you're doing these things, right? Like I feel good about myself because I'm saving the environment, but it's much more nefarious. Just like the COVID that was going on for for this long. As soon as Joe Biden got elected, 
COVID's gone. Everything, COVID's fine. COVID's whatever. Yeah. Lock down the whole country. Oh, we could, we could, we could talk shit, for man. hours about that. Jesus. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to say like Donald Trump, Joe no, Biden. No, no, no. Saying- but I, we could, we could talk about the election fraud. You know, it's been systemically going on for for such a long time. You know? <laughs> if that happened, like in any third world country, with like a huge uproar, you know, and 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 and, and yeah, sent the whatever UNO observers, election observers down there. You know, it's it's such a farce and hypocrisy, but you know that's the way it is. So, guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, I hope we can repeat this discussion like next time, uh, maybe on some other aspects. But I really enjoyed this. Any any other places that um, are where where people can find you, uh, Nico? Let's start with you. Absolutely, guys. If you want cheap hosting, if you don't have a place to put ASIC miner at home or a GPU miner at home, go check out BitVault.com. It's a place to go. And also, go check out my ten-minute daily uh, Bitcoin show for memes, news, shitcoin fails, everything. It's called Simply Bitcoin on YouTube. You'll find it very easily. And man, thank you so much for having me, man. You're I awesome, love it, it. <laughs> Alessandro, uh, CEO of Coinspree. You want to direct some of my people to you? Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Kivan. Thank you, Nico, once again. I hope you soon upload our episode because that was truly on fucking fire. Uh, you you guys can follow me on Twitter, El Sultan Bitcoin. Instagram, El Sultan Bitcoin. You want to telegram me, you have a question regarding Bitcoin Suela, at El Sultan Bitcoin as well. And we'll just be in touch. All righty. Well, you guys take care. Hope Thank you very much. Do this again very soon. All right. Bye bye. Oh, awesome. count on that. Count on that, man. Bye bye, buddy. One hundred percent. Bye. Take care, guys. Bye. Hey, how'd you guys like that? Hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. I really had a blast. Um, make sure you follow Nico and El Sultan Bitcoin on Twitter and on Nico's podcast platform. Make sure you follow me and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, let me know. If you have any you know, special wishes for next episodes or panel discussions, just hit me up on hello at the totalconnector.com. My email address is also kd at kvandavani.com. Yeah, if you want to contribute to my film project, you're more than welcome. Thank you so much again for your support.